Rage fans, it's Kimber Schaefer here with Rage in the Cage OKC News. And the countdown has began for Rage in the Cage 75 coming your way Saturday, September 11th. Or no, that's a Friday. Friday, September 11th. We always do Saturday shows, so I have to catch myself on that. Friday, September 11th at the Oklahoma City Farmers Public Market. And Jordan Brown, you are back in the hot seat interviewing with me for your upcoming bout. You're facing Dan Weber. Yes, ma'am. So, um, obviously, your debut fight was not long ago. I got to interview you for that. Yeah. And walk me through that fight. Um, you know, we, we had a lot of preparation for that fight. You know, coming in, uh, you know, I was pretty confident, especially with the guys I sparred with and who I trained with and, you know, who I trained under. So, you know, coming in. And prior to that fight, you know, I had, I had a fractured foot. So, you know, that was, I mean, that was a little setback. But, you know, we still came with the first round TKO. And, you know, this fight, I'm going to be healthy, and I'm going to be a lot better. So, How did you feel, though, like when the cage door closed, the adrenaline, all that stuff, um, all in check? You know, previously you had mentioned adrenaline dump. You know, um, like I said, we had a lot of preparation. So there really was an adrenaline dump. You know, in my mind, it's just a couple of fists that's coming towards my face. You know, I was, I was very, uh, very lucky to not have any fists that landed on my face that day. But, um, you know, I was, I was really confident. Still am very confident, and uh, you know there really wasn't any adrenaline. It was more nerves before the fight, but once I got in the cage and once I was walking up towards the cage, you know I felt better. So oh, good. I felt more calm, I should say. How do you get in that mindset? Um, you know, I just I accept the nerves, I accept the the doubts in my head, or whatever the case may be, and you know the confident thoughts. You know, I just I just let it all pass through, and you know, I tell myself, you know, I'm not gonna die, you know, clearly. So it's just a fight, and I've been fighting all my life, you know. So that's that's really what carried me through. I'm not, you know, it's just a fight. Um, now tell me a little bit. I where you train, and um, a little bit about your gym. Um, you know, currently, well, I started off with the endurance Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Valetudo under John Morton. Um, he took me in. I trained there for a while. And then, you know, when the whole COVID thing broke down, you know, I didn't really have anywhere to go. But, you know, uh, Jeff Lindsay, he wanted to take me in. So that was me and Blake Morton, we went to Jeff Lindsay, and we still train with him to this day. And um, I train, we train at Standfast under Lindsay MMA, or Jeff Lindsay. Um, to describe the gym and describe our training routine, uh, it's very tough. You know, it's very brutal. Um, you know, there's not going to be a day it's going to be easy. Kind of it reminds me of, you know, college sports, you know, was, they're going to run you until you quit. You know, it's kind of like that. My coach, like he's going to beat you down until you want to quit. You know, luckily I have that mindset where I don't quit. So I get beat down pretty well. And then when I go to other gyms, I beat up other people. So. <laughs> well, good. So we know that you love fighting and you mm-hmm. love the fight game. What are some of your other hobbies and interests? Um, well, truthfully, I. It's kind of hard to find other hobbies. You know, I work like 60 hours a week. So, I mean, my That's other hobbies. That's a lot. To be yeah. so young. What do you do? Uh, well, I w- actually, I work at a factory right now under Hobby Lobby. You know, so that's probably why I'm still in shape. I mean, with weights, I'm like, oh, I'm throwing, throwing 3,000 boxes a day that range from 10 to 40 pounds. So I'm like, I'm kind of, you know, that's a workout there. But, you know, my hobbies, um, I guess I clean. Um, I mean, I contact my family all the time talk to my brothers and sisters um i try to pick up the piano a little bit i did some some little youtube research learned a couple strings and octaves and all that but well, that's, nice. that's really my hobby really is just fighting you know i just love it i study it you know i practice it i think about it even at work i'm out here shadow boxing on my free time you know <laughs> so that's, that's really it in the warehouse just shadow boxing yeah people look at me weird until they saw me fight and now they're like it's like they're more accepting of it. They're like, "Oh yeah, like he's good." Like, I'm like, "Yeah, this is what I do. It's not, it's not a, um, a act, you know, a persona." So. Oh well, good. Mm-hmm. So, um, where does your family live? Um, well, I have family. My family's really from Arizona. Well, my mom's from Trinidad, but I came from Arizona, and then we have family in Oklahoma. We moved out here, so we're kind of just scattered everywhere at this point. So okay. I can't really say where they're at. They're just everywhere. You have younger brothers and sisters or older? Yeah. Um, I have an older brother. He's in Arizona. And I have a younger sister. She stays in Oklahoma City. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. So they're close. You yeah. Some of your family is close. Yeah. Well, good. Mm-hmm. So what are your long-term aspirations then? Uh, in regards to MMA? Yeah. Um, you know, like I said before, you know, we're going to go to the UFC. You know, that's the plan. That's what we're going to execute, you know. 
every fight, you know, just one step closer. And then eventually Dana White's going to take notice and call me. So I love the confidence Thank even you. after just the first fight, because so many debuts can't really say that. Well, I hope to. Yeah. You know, that's usually yeah. but you're you've got it in your head that that's Thank where you. you're going. Yeah. So mm -hmm. sometimes I, I, I we talked about this. It's mindset and attitude. And mm -hmm. that's part of the battle right there. So. Yeah. Well, good. Thank Anything you. else before we wrap it up? Anything um, about this particular fight and your opponent, I believe, Dan Weber? Uh, no. Um, you know, just I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be healthier, and I'm going to do a lot better. Uh, this time, I'm going to be able to stand up, so it'll be great. Well, good. Well, I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to it. Thank you. All right. And any shout outs or sponsors? Um, you know, well, I need some sponsors, of course. You guys better start <laughs> investing in me before I make it to the UFC. So there'd be now's the time, now's right? Now's the time. I'm I'm just that uh I'm that piece of stock that's gonna get you tenfold. So but uh you know, I, I appreciate my coaches, appreciate my family, my friends and the supporters. So thank you all. Appreciate you guys. All right. Well hey, thank you, fight fans. We appreciate you guys. But we appreciate you even more if you can come and see us for Rage in the Cage 75. It's going down Friday, September 11th at the Oklahoma City Farmers Public Market. And did you get tickets? Yes, I have tickets. I have lots of tickets. Lots of and tickets. They sold out last time, so limited time. Hey, but. yeah, get them early. We have a limited number of seats um, mm -hmm. due to COVID, obviously, and the restrictions that we have. So our events always sell out anyways, but even quicker um, now that we have, you know, the restrictions. Um, I'm assuming in September we'll still have restrictions. So hoping not, but, you know, um, it's looking like we will. So we hope to see you guys there. Get tickets from this guy right here, Jordan mm -hmm. Brown, any other fighter on the card. Make sure you go to Stubwire and click their name if you can't see them in person, and we will see you there.